Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This is going to be a quick version and this is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining. Please subscribe to the channel and share this channel with your community. Like I said earlier, this is going to be a quick version. So if you prefer the full length, non time lapsed version, check out my Patreon page and my Paint with Lovejoy website. If you want to further support Paint with Lovejoy, please do. It all helps. And for more in-depth courses, check out paintwithlovejoy.com. And as always, share this with your community. All right, guys, another fun painting. So grab your supplies, make sure you take your progress photos. And on today's painting, this is a time-lapsed version. If you prefer the full-length version, please check out my website, paintwithlovejoy.com, or even my Patreon page. So for this one, you have full permission to switch out colors on any aspect today. We're going to be filling up the background with shades of light blue and light purple. And I am using a large flat brush, and you notice that I am mixing my color multiple times as I fill up the background. So as you do yours, don't feel like you have to mix all the color that you need um, in, the, in one go. It is okay to kind of have a little variety and mix your colors as you go. It's actually better for you to do that because your brain picks up um, how much pigment and what it looks like when you mix the pigment each time that you mix it. And once we have this filled in, we're going to be adding some blues and purples on top of it and doing what we call wet on wet blending. And like I said, this is the time lapse version, so please do not keep up to pace with this. Um, pause the video as often as you need to and go at your own pace. We are starting with the background, fill that up, get everything that you want done to your background, then you're gonna let it dry and then you'll move on into the flowers. Uh, so here, good spot, pause the video, let it fully dry. And then as we do the flowers, I'm doing a multiple color flowers. You can switch them out and do all the same color or you can do multiple colors. And what I'm doing is I'm starting with a kind of a light to medium blue. I am holding that brush perpendicular to the canvas and kind of stabbing the brush with the canvas. Um, so I place a dot in the center where I want the hydrangea to be and then just kind of keep making that dot bigger till I have the bloom uh, ball that the hydrangeas have. And now I'm moving into the light pink. We're just getting our base colors on for the first layer and then we're gonna do a second layer on top of this. And this helps for two reasons. I'm using student grade paint, so a second layer gives me a more opaque coverage, as well as kind of figure out the composition. So when we do the second layer, if you wanna change colors or maybe make it bigger, um, that second layer gives you the option to make adjustments. And right now I'm moving into the light purple, filling in a few more areas where the hydrangeas are gonna be. Don't forget, it is okay to overlap some of these. Um, if you do leave some space in between them, you can put some leaves in there, and that's what we're moving into next. And we're gonna be doing a mixture of yellow and green. Your call how much yellow, your call how much green, and placing our uh, leaves on there. And just kind of doing this little teardrop pointy shape. You can add as many or as few leaves as you would like. And I'm going to encourage that you trust your instincts. If you've got kind of a space in between flowers and you go, you know what? A leaf would look really good right there. Trust that and go ahead and put a leaf there. It is okay to have the leaves overlap each other and overlap the flowers and just kind of step back and fill in the space and trust your instincts of where you might want to put a leaf. You're doing great. Again, do not keep up with the pace of the video and remember to breathe as you go through the process. All right, so we got that last leaf in there and now we're grabbing that direct green and on the bottom and kind of the right hand side of the leaf, we are adding the darker green and this is giving us a shadow. We're gonna be adding yellow or a light yellow green to the opposite side. And by having three shades, your light, medium, and dark shade, this is what helps create that 3D illusion on a flat 2D surface. So here you can see where I'm applying the yellow on the opposite side that I applied the green. Do a little bit of mixing on there. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're still gonna look at it and go, yep, that's a leaf and flowers. Now we're using the pointy brush and putting the stems in. 
Again, this does not have to be perfect. You do not have to have a leaf or a stem connected to each specific flower. We're thinking of a flower arrangement where they're all just kind of bundled together in the vase at the bottom. All right, doing a great job. Pause that video, take a progress photo. We're gonna go back into our flowers and put our second layer. So we're going back to kind of a light and medium blue. Going back to those first couple of hydrangeas, putting our second layer on there. Then we're going to take a darker blue and apply that on the bottom. And it, on the bottom of this uh, hydrangea bloom ball, it's going to kind of be on the bottom, almost make a smiley face or look like a parentheses on the bottom. And this is, again, just like the leaves, creating a level of depth and a 3D element on a flat 2D surface. And we're going to do this with all of them. And then we'll go back in with some white at the top to get that third lighter value in there. And a tip from many students that have taken classes and watched my videos, they like to watch the video all the way through first, and then they paint along the second time. So I do recommend doing that. Here you can see we're moving into that light pink. We're putting that second layer on there. And then we're going to do kind of a medium darker pink on the bottom, just like we did with the blue flowers. Now with this kind of application, you're holding that brush perpendicular to the canvas and just kind of tapping the ends of it. Um, it's almost like using a sponge and just kind of getting a nice texture on there. It's easy to blend and it lends really well to all skill levels. Nice. So here we go. A little bit darker on those pink flowers. Again, keeping that same type of formula. We're going dark on the bottom. Then we have our medium color and then we're going to go a little lighter on the top. Next, we're going to move into the light purple flowers. Do the same thing. Put that base on there and then a darker purple at the bottom. And then we'll take some pure white and um, get the highlight on all the flowers at the same time. If you happen to be using paint that dries super quickly, I would recommend watching this all the way through and then doing each of your flowers, medium color, dark color at the bottom, and then highlight on the top all at one time and then move on to your next flower. Because this method works well, if your paint stays a little bit wet, it makes some of your blending a little bit easier. So here we are coming in with that direct white paint. Um, we're placing it on the top and then we're going to kind of blend it in with the exact same application, holding that brush perpendicular to the canvas and kind of tapping your brush against the edge and doing that to all the flowers. This is something that as you prop your painting up and you get out of your chair and look at it from a distance of five to ten feet away, it makes, makes a little bit more sense. And when you look at it from that distance, if you're looking and going, you know what, I need the highlight brighter or I need the shadow darker here. Trust that, go back to your painting and make the adjustments. So now we're moving into the pointy brush, white paint. We're gonna get that vase on there and we're starting with that bottom kind of ellipt curve. And then the edges, I did a curved one. You can do straight if you like. And then we're doing a few highlights that are going right over those stems. And by going over the stem, it gives the illusion that those stems are inside the vase. We're going to do kind of a few of the same things, same mark making with some darker blue. And this is just giving some contrast. And another student recommendation has been to pause the video, take a screenshot, and then you can zoom in closer if it's harder to see some of the smaller details. In this nice age of technology, we have a lot of options to learn how to do something. Now we're taking some direct blue or direct purple and kind of putting an illusion of a table below the vase. This is rather sloppy, so just kind of slap that paint on there and have some fun. And now this part is going to be optional. We're going to fill in some kind of remaining spaces with some random small flowers. Again, you can change the color of this. You can add them. You don't have to add them. You can do something different. But I'm going to be putting some red flowers on there and then some yellow flowers, and then we'll do a little dot in the center. But again, feel free to take parts of this painting that work for you. Um, things that don't work for you, you can leave them out, change the colors, but just use this as a guideline to make your uh, painting. And be proud of yourself for taking time out of your day to get creative. It is highly therapeutic and very beneficial to just kind of do something different than you do um, in your daily life that you do at work or that you do with your family. So having these creative outlets just 
brings another little intrigue and balance to your world. So using that purple for those center dots, you could use black if you wanted to, and then add anything else that you may be inclined to add to your painting. I am very proud of you guys for taking time out of your day to get creative. Please try to find creative outlets on a regular basis, weekly, if not monthly, just to bring a little bit more balance to your life. So thanks again for hanging out and until next time, cheers. Thank you.